is when you pull back the curtain and you look at what actually makes up the wealth of high net worth givers to your organization. Uh, business interests, there is no, there's no asset class that is larger. I'm excited today to have with us a very popular guest, Eric Fleshhood. Eric is the CEO of the Crew Foundation, $150 million in assets. And Eric has been with Crew for 25 years and has been the CEO of the Crew Foundation since 2016. Eric is a very popular guest on our program and he is going to deliver again today. He's going to be talking about the area of business interest and how our partners and donors can use their business interests and sell either all or a portion of their business to give to our nonprofit organization. So I'm excited for you to hear the message today. So Eric, take it away. Jim, thanks so much. Uh, I, I love coming on. I love being with your, your viewers and uh, want to congratulate you on the fine job that you're doing helping to educate nonprofit leaders, uh, gift officers, and others in development on the latest and greatest in just everything from basic blocking and tackling to advanced strategies. Uh, your channel is really covering a lot of ground. Well, thanks, Eric. I appreciate that very much. One of the things I've especially appreciated about you is just your wealth of knowledge and understanding and the fact that you really think outside the box. Uh, you know, so many of us just are thinking about getting a cash gift and you got me thinking about asset giving and then moving into the world of what I would call non-traditional giving uh, and thinking about giving a property and, and other uh, ways. We're gonna talk today about a very specific areas. We are working on 12 videos here at year end. Uh, you're gonna bring before us today something that I think oftentimes people miss is this area of business interests. And uh, tell us a little bit about this topic. And please, uh, I think we always enjoy our little facts, our little tidbits, our numbers. Uh, please introduce uh, some of those numbers for us. Sure. Well, Jim, um, the reason, one of the reasons this topic is so important is when you pull back the curtain and you look at what actually makes up the wealth of high net worth givers to your organization. Uh, business interests, there is no, there's no asset class that is larger. Jim, would you like to hazard a guess as to what the typical percentage of a high net worth donor's wealth is that's in their business interest? Uh, according to uh, data from the Federal Reserve, it is anywhere from 40 to 60% of their entire net worth is in just business interests. And so when, when we're talking to our constituents and we're asking them to bring their best, put their best foot forward to help us advance the cause that they care so deeply about, we really need to, to be equipped to help them think about, well, gosh, 60% of everything I am is in this business. So how do I, how do I tap into that piece of my wealth to advance the cause? Mm. Well, when you say business interest, Eric, unpack that a little bit. Uh, sure. Certainly I get ownership. Um, what are what are you know outside interests that uh, business interest sure. that people might have beyond just owning their own business? Sure. And this is Jim. I, I understand this. This is a brand new area for uh, many of your viewers uh, who aren't in the business world, and so they may not be familiar with some of these terms. But just to get to get started, we're talking about everything from the basic sole proprietorship, which is just a fancy word for, hey, I'm a one-man shop, I am the business, uh, to what are called LLCs, a limited liability corporation. We're talking about uh, businesses that are structured as S corporations or C corporations. Um, we're talking about businesses that are uh, could be partnerships. Partnerships can take the form of a family partnership, or a partnership where there's a, a master partner and then limited partners. Um, any of these are what we're talking about. 
Mm, that's that is tremendous. That helps a lot. Well, Eric, I, I know you've always been so good about helping us to find those little cues when we're talking about our partners and and uh, in talking with them, of course, if, if they're saying something as simple or as easy as, yeah, I'm going to be selling my business soon. Well, it would seem to be the time that we'd want to bring this up. But is there a time earlier than that 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 we could introduce this? Are there sure. are there signs that they give us or things that we could be looking out for uh, for that they're yeah. hearing about this? Yeah, there sure are, Jim. And I'm glad you mentioned the sale. If you certainly, if you hear uh, a, a partner saying something like, "I'm anticipating selling my business in the next year or two, you want to speak up because once they enter into a legally binding agreement of sale, it's too late to be thinking about a gift of that business. And so they need they need as much time as you can give them to uh, metabolize the idea. You mean I could save? a bunch of taxes by gifting a piece of my business before the sale. And so, uh, but other, other ways to get into that conversation, Jim, you know, one of my, one of the things I'm always hearing from my uh, constituents are oftentimes I'll bring a proposal in, I'll make, I'll make a, you know, an, a, a large aggressive ask uh, by faith and they'll, they'll say, you know, Eric, uh, I wish you had come to me a few months ago. You know, that would have been a much better time. I wish I could do more now, but, but, and then you fill in the blank, but, you know, there's a pinch on my cash flow right now, or, but I'm facing a big tax bill, or um, I have got uh, commitments to other organizations that I've got to fulfill first. And that's when you can chime in and say, well, what if I could show you a way that you could do both? Would that be something you'd be interested in? And uh, I have never heard, I've never had a donor say, no, I wouldn't be interested in hearing what, what, well, you know, you've teased me, what's the idea? And that's what you say, well, what if you could give a non-controlling, non-voting interest in your business that would help our nonprofit advance the cause? Eric, let me ask you this. Um, is this a complicated process? Is this something that, uh, you know, would, is it way over people's heads to be thinking about this? Sure. Well, Jim, it, it is uh, a more complex way uh, to give, but it is well worth it because you're talking about adding two or three zeros uh, to the end of the typical gift a person might contemplate apart from considering a gift to business interest. After all, we're talking 40 to 60% of their net worth versus the typical gift, which they're thinking cash, and that's 10% or less of their overall net worth. So, uh, and business interests also tend to be a gift that can keep on giving. So for example, if you own uh, shares in someone's business, profits from that business are going to flow to you year after year after year, as long as you own those shares. And as the business succeeds and grows, the value of the shares that your charity own are going to go up in value, and the profit margin uh, has the has the opportunity to increase uh, also over time. And so it can be a it can be a recurring source of revenue for your business for for your ministry. Wow, that's tremendous. Well, Eric, uh, as we're thinking about marketing these things, and it doesn't have to just be business interests. I know you've talked about property. You've talked about. Uh, giving of assets, how would a typical nonprofit organization market uh, these kind of opportunities to, you know, to their audience, email marketing, uh, producing a brochure, what, what are some things that, that our audience could do to yes. help market some of these things? Yeah, Jim, we find that um, treating this as a standalone topic is very important, and also trying to segment your list to identify people who are likely to be business owners and focusing your messaging on those, those audiences. So you could use, uh, you know, a wealth finding tool or some other screening service to try to find those folks. But we use uh, standalone uh, brochures that unpack this whole idea of, uh, of giving a piece of your business to ministry or to your nonprofit. Um, we uh, bring these to donor events. 
uh, and, and make them available there. But we also do mass mailings, again, targeted to that part of our file that's likely to own businesses. Wow, that's outstanding. Where well, this is business interest is a great way to be thinking. And of course, I'm sure it caught people's attention when you said adding one to three zeros at the end of their their gift. And you know, the fact that people uh, will say to us, we'd love to give more, but and this gives them a great opportunity to give more. Uh, that's just that's tremendous. Well, Eric, as we wrap up here. Uh, any last uh, bits of advice you would give our audience uh, as they're thinking about this particular topic, uh, especially year end right. business interests or or at any particular sure. time? Well, Jim, I think there's one important piece we haven't covered uh, as yet, and that is when you get a donor who is interested in discussing, what do you do with that person? And so many, I know many of your viewers work at smaller uh, nonprofits where maybe they don't have a plan giving team or they don't have access to an in-house foundation. What are they supposed to do with this complex gift? And that's the good news there is that there is very likely a foundation in your area that is set up to help a nonprofit like you take in a gift of business interest and make use of it. It could be uh, your, your community foundation. It could be a religious foundation connected to your denomination or your, uh, your nonprofit. It could be a national a trust or foundation that's set up. Some of the big box national um, uh, donor advice funds are also set up to be able to take in business interests. So uh, you want to you uh, begin to find out about those programs so that when you find that that donor who's like, yes, absolutely. I'd love to, to save taxes and see your nonprofit benefit from that. You can turn and say, okay, I'm going to call my friend at the local community foundation and get that going. Wow. Terrific, Eric. Thank you very much. Well, as usual, you're a wealth of knowledge and experience, and I just appreciate so much you bringing these messages from time to time to our audience. I know people really appreciate it. Jim, great. Thanks for having me on. Thanks so much, Eric. Take care.